Hello, Narnag here. Oh, welcome back to the Offworld Trading Company. We have arrived in week 3 of our campaign. And the weakest link is gonna fall at the end of this round. So we have to make sure that we stay on top of things at the top of the list. And no, nope, hopefully push someone off the ladder. So once again, we have three locations we can choose from. And I've had a little bit of a, a look and a think about this. Nergal Valis. It features Sam Moreno and Anastasia Xu, who are the number two and the number three players. Along with Silas Crichton, who is the weakest of the players. My thinking is, if these are consistently good, then they're probably going to push Silas off of the ladder. So you could say that they take 40% of the of the market share while Silas only gets 20 and they push that. So there's going to be a relatively fierce competition here. If I jump in, then we have to split the pie even further. Then we have to split the pie four ways rather than three ways. So I think I'm just going to leave them be and let them just ruffle stomp Silas. Poor Silas, but hey, this is business and business is tough. So this is not one that we consider. Then we have Valles Marineris, which has Yoji and uh, Renny, who are, well, sort of just below the, the, the middle of the pack. Um, so there's not a lot to gain. They'll just, uh, if I really beat them, I'll just uh, stay up top and they just stay at the bottom and nothing is really going to change. They're also not really a big threat yet, I think, because they are so low on the ranking. Um, so that leaves Exante Terra, which has Frank Dawson and Elana. So Elana is halfway through and Frank Dawson is near the bottom. So I, I might have an interesting opportunity here to uh, get out on top. On the other hand, no, I might completely lose here. That That's also possible. Um, there is, of course, some degree of a variation and I might completely mess up. <coughs> also, this one has off-world markets available for everybody, which I think is going to be interesting because we haven't had them yet. And this is a, a, an excellent way to showcase what off-world markets can do for us. Because if we have excess resources, we can just put a strap them to a rocket and shoot them off to Earth and, and get good money for it. Um, also, this is a medium-sized map, uh, very chaotic. There's no ice and it has rare resources. So there's going to be a very strong struggle to corner certain markets, which will make things interesting. Um, the mission reward I don't really care about. It's an underground nuke. Sure. Um, USA, we haven't won a map yet with the USA uh, subsidizing the colony, so we don't get a bonus. It also means it's going to be a fresh start for us, uh, a new type of situation. So the USA colony, they have office modules from the start, and as far as I remember, office modules only need power to function, and I think they need glass to build, and they don't allow machine shops to be built when machine shops consume electronics so it's gonna be interesting we uh, we can't corner the electronics market this time but we'll have to have a look at uh, what's possible and of course we can always uh, ship stuff off a world so let's go continue hiring staff is there a geothermal available yet oh yeah and we can actually permanently hire a, a geothermal engineer excellent I highly approve of this because it's a very stable source of energy. So let's have a look at the initial market situations. Oh, Mars prices versus off-world prices. Interesting. So we last episode, we really ended up with a high food price and that, that seems to be a general trend now. Off-world food prices are well pretty fair as well. But if we have a look at export prices, Oxygen is going to be very good for exporting and water is going to be very good for exporting along with fuel. So it's the basic necessities of life that if we have surpluses, we can make a killing exporting them uh, back to Earth. So that might be a very interesting, different uh, approach. Also shipping electronics, even though we're not going to fuel them into the buildings because we can't have the, the machine shops. We can still send them off uh, off world and make a killing. So I think we're off to a very good start there. So uh, let's launch the business and uh, see how it goes. Mm -hmm. 
all corporations are able to build one extra off-world market. Okay. Also, we have unlocked... Oh, cool. We have two different headquarters. Let's see. Buildings built over resources will use those resources as input. When targeted by EMPs and power surge, the effects last 50% less at time, acquires patterns 50% faster. Oh, this is a scientific headquarter. It can be fun. But I I do like the extra claim that you get for each uh, HQ upgrade. And you need 50% less steel for building and your units are faster. That's, uh, that's pretty powerful. Okay, so let's get scouting actually before we do that so the habitat is still the same we just need to uh, put a lot of aluminium in and the office modules they consume power and you need glass to build them okay so i was actually uh, on the right track uh, there hmm. ah so this replaces the tool shop it's just a unique building so you can still add laboratories and we can add warehouses as we please. Alright, cool. So let's get scouting. Let's actually scout all around since the, the AI doesn't really seem to be into scouting. They'll just settle wherever I uh, scout. Levels of carbon found. High levels of silicon found. Low levels of water found. So how are we doing so far? What's that? Ah, someone is uh, building there. Low levels of aluminum found. Someone's building there. That means we probably just want to push into a different corner and corner that market, quite literally. Levels of water found. Medium levels of aluminum found. So if you have a look at most of the resources, there's not a lot of water, uh, not a lot of high-end water available. There's also a bit of a scarcity when it comes to silicon. High levels of aluminum found. So if we settle here, we can get a lot of water, which we can then turn into other basic commodities and send it off world. So this is the only precious water. There's a little bit of water here. And there's bits of water. So most of the water is on the right hand side of the map. In addition to that, there's uh, some aluminium deposits over there. There's some, some, some basic, basic carbon. But it looks like the other resource types are on the other side of the map. So we actually have a bunch of iron over here, but no water. Then the silicon is very strongly located in the bottom here. So silicon prices are gonna go up if we don't jump on it. Uh, carbon is probably... Well, this is efficient, but you can still get quite some in other places. On the other hand, we don't really need silicon unless you're gonna go for glass. So if we go for well you need glass to build these of course that's annoying we could go for some laboratories because then we only need electronics to build it well that also uses a silicon ah. this is one of those damned if you do damned if you don't situations so we just focus on building houses then all you need is aluminium which there's a fair chunk of and then for the rest, we just focus on the basic resources. And we'll just, just spread this around, basically based on what's the cheapest to build. 
Okay, so let's let's go with that. This is gonna be creative as well. Where to locate ourselves? If we go with here, then we have some space on all sides, right? So I want to go there, I want to go there and just grab some other things nearby. Yeah, this allows us plenty of expansion space. So, geothermal, we want power. Power is going to be important here. Water, very important. So I'm just gonna put two of those out. Then we want a greenhouse and we want an electrolysis reactor. Um, yeah. So water, let's uh, just start out of selling it out of the bat. Once the geothermal is up, that should be good as well. Then at least we compensate for our power expenses. Fuel prices are gonna go up. All prices are going up. Oh, we can build a, a greenhouse. That's good. That we have a lot of things from the get-go that we can start selling. Also, we're completely crashing this market. <laughs> Probably because a lot of people are on it. Expanded. Okay, power. We're making money there as well now excellent that means we can now also start investing in fuel and then we will be just not big digging ourselves into a, uh, a bigger depth hole is that even a word i don't know it sounds like it could be a word so let's sell some uh, excessive stuff here as well Stop auto selling here because we're running out of water, which we need to fuel the other things. But that's that's one my one annoyance that the auto sell impedes your own usage of the resources. Okay, so aluminium and steel are probably going to be useful for us next. Yeah, I see someone already set up here. This is the medium level. Yep, they talk to double stack. We probably want to grab this iron here so we can make our own steel. The prices are gonna go up. They're only gonna go up. Also, we still still have a bunch of core samples, so we can always have a look. Uh, oh, if we want other things, a bunch of uh, carbon. It can turn into something else, of course, but. We, we can dig around a little bit and see what we get. 17,000. How are the prices behaving here? Steel, aluminium, both 60. So we got this. Just safeguard it. Oh, a specific tile. Oh. Interesting. But we don't have any pleasure domes we can build. We well, could build a build windmill there for power. Power prices are going up. Cool. Ah, we spent quite a lot of money on that, of course. Actually, I want to upgrade first. Priorities, we can always do something with that. We have the flag up there to remind us. Okay, so we are now using more water already than we produce. Okay. This is an adjacency bonus. It's not perfect, but it was the best stack. And at least we got those and we can just grab the uh, adjacent ones afterwards. So food we're still selling and it's still going good. What we don't sell, 
we don't make a that large a surplus, so that's gonna be a limited use. So let's expand here, let's expand there. That's gonna put more stress on our water supply. On the other hand, we were already making enough. And since the prices have tanked, we can get away with just using up all of our water. Um, extra factories are gonna mean more electro usage. We probably just want another geothermal. Also aluminium and steel. Prices are going up. Well, I want to safeguard some, just some uh, defensive resource building. So if we set it up here, we get 1.24, but it's gonna cost us 0.3 fuel. And fuel is also at a premium. So that's just ridiculously expensive. This close, we use less fuel. We gain less uh, of the resource, but it's gonna cost less fuel as well. Also, if we set up here, we annoy the heck out of our opponents because they can't get a proper tree link. So that's, that's a very good thing to do. Um, geothermal, so then all we need is steel. Iron is relatively affordable. Actually, the price of, of steel has come down quite a bit, so we might as well just get away with buying a bunch. Boom. So let's buy a hundred. And aluminium we are producing now. Excellent. Okay, we got one more claim and we are negative on power. That means we'll build another geothermal. And from the looks of it, it might actually be the last one. Yeah, someone else bought. Oh no, wait, that's me. Were there only two? Oh, wow, excellent. We managed to corner the, the geothermal power market. Which I highly approve of. Corning market is profitable. So at level four, we can get an off-road market. So if we just rush for level four, that's gonna be good. Another specific tile. This is aluminium, but it's very far away. I don't think this is just too far away. The fuel costs are gonna kill us. So that's a, a good scoop for them. So we're getting to the point where we actually have the resources to start buying some modules that's good that's very good also alternatively we just want to upgrade this so what's happening with our yeah it's just a slow going our aluminium production but it is going so that that's the important bit let's see I don't think we use the oxygen for anything but our HQ right now, so we might as well sell our excesses. And the fuel, there's also no other things that rely on it. So we're level 3 now, we got another 5 tiles. Double check, there are no geothermals. be interesting if you could actually dig yourself another geothermal somewhere. Someone is being a pirate there, shooting things out of the sky. I think we had this claim near town, right? Yes, let's just build a wind turbine there. It's not gonna produce a lot of power, but 0 0.22 that's gonna be no 45 per second and this is only gonna cost us a little bit I think this is uh, this is gonna be a net profit for us and besides pleasure centers or uh, there's nothing really else that that's useful to build there We have a lot of money. Let's uh, do some expanding. So, actually, 
Let's set up a little bit of glass so we can keep investing in colonies. If we ratchet up the price for power, then we might be able to make a, quite a killing from all that power. Also, steel prices are plummeting. I just buy 200 for future upgrades and things like that. Aluminium is just going to be slowly trickling in. We might even be able to make most of it. Also, water prices have completely tanked. So there's no change there. Food is crazy. Let's uh, build another one. Oh, a specific tile. Another one. So that's it. Let's uh, build some more power plants there. Just also to deny other people the pleasure domes. Which is uh, just strategic. Boom. Okay, just pay off all the debts. Just to keep that clear. We do need more water now. And this was a tree stack, wasn't it? Oh wow, trace amounts. Did someone nuke us? Buggers. That's where underground nukes are uh, very annoying. They can just completely ruin how good a tile is. Also, it, the timing is pretty good since I just built more uh, greenhouses. Now the upgrade level 4, that gets us the off-world trading market, which is going to be a very expensive to build actually. A bunch of glass, steel and electronics. But I think we are pretty well geared for the rest of the game now. So water, we might as well... Build another one. Then build another one of these to get our triangle going up. In terms of food, price is still slightly, slightly rising. So we might as well go for another triangle. We'll explode our food production quite a bit. It's going to use some of the new water. So we will not build up too large a surplus. Actually can sell a little bit of it. Just have to keep an eye on it. Then let's have a look. Is there still silicon to be had? It's all there. That's annoying. So let's uh, do some, some looking for... There's lots of carbon. Iron up here. Carbon iron. I'm afraid there's not a lot of silicon that we could could get. Ooh, sneaky. Someone is doing a water over there. Okay, so... Making... Glass would require buying silicon. Quite a bit of it. There's a big disparity in prices, so it's not even that crazy an idea. Also, I, I said something about paying attention to not selling all my water. It's exactly what I have to do, not sell all my water. Just keep it ratcheted up a little bit, I'm driving the prices up, but sure, just to make everything else continue producing. Um, this one is screaming for a potential upgrade. On the other hand, we can build our off-world market. Which is something we definitely want to protect with the Goon Squad. So if someone tries to mess with it, the Goon Squad is gonna counter them. And it also means that this tab is gonna unlock. 
Hey, a mule. That means we can mine 200 units of something. Uh, I would use it for the silicon, but it's just not worth it. Let them pit against each other. Also, someone is sabotaging my food production. Butters. Okay, let's uh, stop selling for now. And let's build another one. <laughs> we can use the food, the. We can use this stuff. Also, we are producing a huge surplus because we're not using the the water right now. Okay, let's stop auto selling it. We're under 100 again. Making a bit more food here, so losses are not completely bad. How long is this gonna last still? 30 seconds, 20 seconds, okay, so in 20 seconds we're stable again. Uh, but it's good, we got this under control. This is not gonna ratchet up the cost any further. Water prices on the other hand. Holy moly, what's happening here? Also, we can launch stuff. Uh, we can't really make a lot of profits right now. Because we don't have the reserves, so we would need to buy stuff on the markets. That's the downside of having a good local market, actually. But let's uh, invest some in the colony. I completely forgot about that. So. We got 11 shares. So we got more than 50% of all the total investments done. Dropping the price a little bit here. Our food production is back to normal, so let's just start selling the surplus again. See, we can't make a profit by selling it. Um, oxygen, what's the... It's 480, so that's actually... Better to ship it off world. The same goes for water, which we are actually accumulating. It's a little bit, but... It still works. Uh, we are driving down the price, um, but it's actually better to sell it locally because this price is higher than there. Also, they got teleportation, the buggers. Okay. We st still have a very strong interest in the market, and we're a day six out of seven. Perpetual motion, that means we save more power, or sell more power. I think I want it. Um, also because it's gotta reduce the cost for competitors, I want to deny it to them. And we have the money to pay it out of pocket. So we're selling even more power now, rather than someone else saving the money. Hey, let's focus on expanding. Uh, we still have a lot of work uh, to do. Also, fuel and oxygen are very good to ship off world. As long as we just make more of it. So let's actually build another generator for that. So we do have reserves and it's gonna make us 8k, so we might as well... Oh wait, we need actually, we need a lot of fuel. So let's start stockpiling, that's gonna increase our prices for that. Also be using more water than we produce right now. Let's fix that. So, boosting. get another bunch of claims that's also good our uh, goon squad still stands and protects which is good actually let's build a bit more of aluminium and 
actually very curious to see if we course sample this. Is it water? Okay. That's, that's what I was hoping for. It would have been nice if we rolled aluminium that we could make a uh, triangle again. The water though, we already have a efficient cluster over there, so there's no point in making more. This way we generate a little bit more aluminium, so we get a surplus. And now of course prices are dropping. Uh, of course they are. Steel prices are high while iron is a consistent. Ooh, Ilana is trying to catch up. I really need to uh, up my ante here. So, can we ship something for a good profit? Yeah, we'll ship water. And I'm just gonna start shipping my resources again. Also, iron and silicon, I'm just gonna sell them to the market. Just to free up some more money. We need 50k, we need tons of aluminium. Market price is going down, so that's actually a good thing. Just gonna buy tons. It's gonna reduce the capital investments that we need. So actually the aluminium was not the issue, it was just the money. Hey, let's make more money. Because we can always launch more stuff into space. So let's just continue focusing on what we're good at right now. We make uh, food. Yep, this works. Make more fuel stuffs. And we are producing quite a bunch of aluminium right now. Off-world shipment launched. Look at all the money. We're still being protected. That's good. Uh, we can ship more. So let's uh, package this one up. Use a bunch of our uh, stored up fuel. I think water shipments are the best thing we can do right now. Especially because prices are plummeting. So we're just buying. And shipping. And we won. Okay, I was actually... Again, I was losing the timer, so I wonder if the, the metal clanging sound that I heard close to the end, if that was the, the, the warning. Probably should have bought more, probably had the money, especially with the, the space flights. But, yeah, well, can't always have everything, especially because I was, I was winning pretty well. 17 versus 23 in total. Well, that's pretty decent. Share price of 16, number 2 was 12. We made a killing off of these apples. So did they. We spent a lot on aluminium until I decided in later in the end to actually buy some. They spent a ton on fuel, so I probably <laughs> bankrolled myself with that. Yeah, we gained 279k off of fuel. So yeah, and let's see. Resource prices, just look at this. Is this the power price or the oxygen price? They're both white. No, power price just plummeted. Um, oh, it's the glass price that just rose through the roof. Interesting. So, we have a 42% interest in the colony and as a result, we will be Making quite a bunch off of this. 220k per week. Interesting, so... Crichton was second. And here a Renny one. So let's see who dropped off. Ooh. Would you prefer a free solar panel or a wind turbine? I'd like the wind turbine please. So, Frank Dawson got eliminated. Excellent. And we are still on top of everything. I'm, I'm very, very pleased with that. But how it's going to go next week, you'll have to see in the next episode. So as always, thank you very much for watching. And hope to see you again next time. Bye bye.